we have had some arrests. Um, the former Minister of Home Affairs, Honorable Campiongo, um, uh, Honorable Malanji, the former Foreign Affairs Minister, and of course, someone from the Treasury, uh, Mr. Fredson Yamba. Isn't it only fair that uh, figures as those that have just, you know, um, called out should be made to account for the wrongs they may have done? After all, we are a nation that is led by the constitution and everyone is equal before the law. So perhaps they were hiding under the powers that they carried. Now they have to face the law. I would have loved perhaps for them to have been arrested when they were still in power. So what do you make of all this that they are being arrested now because they are out of power? What, what, what does that mean? Um, the simple answer I can uh, provide is that we have a government and a president who clearly got into office through deceit and lies. And uh, uh, if it was lies pure out of lack of understanding, possibly what we would have had by now is a confession from the president that uh, I didn't know how government operates. I, I think, engaged in discussions or my discourse in terms of political promises uh, on, uh, on uh, clearly lack of understanding. And now that I'm in government, I have discovered that uh, the situation is totally different. And to that effect, I am learning the ropes, but I'm determined and my intentions as a president, my heart's con you know, condition towards the welfare of the government people is such that I mean well, I want us to move forward. And therefore, we are going to work together to make sure that this thing work. But clearly it looks like the lies were deliberately packaged. And uh, these are people who understand that their deceit will soon, just as it has happened, be exposed. To divert the attention of the Zambian people from what they promised and the Zambian people holding them to account, they have undertaken a crusade through their propaganda machinery to try and paint the patriotic front as a group of people who preoccupied themselves with criminality when we were in government. The president, Mr. Akainde Ichlema, had even the audacity to face the world through BBC to give misinformation. Uh, maybe misinformation will not be a word that people will easily understand. To lie to the world and say, I have found empty coffers. The Patriotic Front as a government borrowed, to a, borrowed money to a tune of $36 billion. And therefore, it's all a mess. And this whole money went into people's pockets. It has delivered nothing. Because of all these glaring lies from even the highest office of the land, and now also carried through by his lieutenants, the ministers, trying to bash PF and so on, the next thing was to try and validate their narrative of saying PF is what is corrupt. The president has been obsessed to a point of getting deck, SCC, the police and everybody at his house every day in the morning, at lunch, in the evening, giving them instructions, you need to find something. Clearly, uh, there is a desperate effort to try and validate the narrative the president has been preaching, both locally and internationally, to suggest international, obviously, in an unpatriotic manner, where you wash dirt linen in public, some of which is basically, if not most of it, based on false words. So what do you do? You have to arrest some people. Now, in arresting some people, the starting point was, uh, first of all... Wait a minute, Honorable Nakashin. Is it unusual that the SEC and DC 
is it unusual that they should be reporting to the president as you are making it sound like it's, it's out of the ordinary? It is unusual and every citizen of the republic should be concerned that the president himself begins to get involved in the day-to-day -day operation of these law enforcing agencies because then that heavy-handedness has the potential to make these institutions begin to operate in a politically inclined manner as it has been exhibited now. Let's say that the president has said we want to investigate through Kajoba. We want to investigate crimes that were committed. Do you know the period? From 2015 to date. Targeting the period with which his predecessor president <laughs> Edgar Chaganung was president. What, what if the reverse is true? That the fact that cases that were committed, crimes, alleged crimes that were committed as far back as 2015 are being prosecuted now, doesn't that say a lot about the kind of regime the PF was? No, no. no. Repressive <laughs> to the institutions that are supposed to investigate? Let me maybe answer it this way. If I'm given a responsibility to be DG for DEC, or indeed SEC, or uh, one of the law enforcing agencies, and it so happens that I'm serving under the repressive regime, and from the UPND, they believe that uh, there were instructions that were coming from political leaders in PF. That's how come they themselves are giving instructions, because they think that is how PF was operating. That's what Misaka Indeichirema believes. He thinks that President Edgar Chagalungu was calling SCC and said, go and pro you know, investigate that one, go and do these things. So because of that, and maybe he, in his mind, he was admiring what he imagined was the power the president had to control these things. And that's how come he has even passed a gazette notice to get DEC, SCC, you know, go to his office so that he can now be giving instructions. Now, if I was the director general and I receive instructions to do something that is professionally wrong, I have only two options, either to resign or to become an accomplice. So if you are saying that the PF was such an oppressive government, or part in government, and therefore these people could not function properly. The question is, why didn't they resign? And if they didn't resign, were they not accomplices? And if at all the decisions that are being made are morally right, why didn't they arrest first of all the accomplices? Um, and why I'm saying, why, while I'm on that one, it means that you must have valid reasons and cases that these people did not investigate and they tolerated. But in this case, the reason why these people are still in offices is because they are saying to them, there must be something that these people have done. Tell us, what did the Kampiongo do as the Minister of Home Affairs? When these people go and investigate and find nothing, the president says, no, you are lying to me. You must find something. And in the end, in fishing and so on, they go and arrest Honorable Kampiongo over an incident in a campaign where it is alleged that, uh, or said that uh, an helicopter failed to land in, 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 in Siwangando because people there ran amok and so on. In a campaign. Yes, it involved an helicopter. But uh, <laughs> there are incidences, for example, in, in Amwala, where an FDD candidate, for example, was stopped from entering Namwala and people were beaten by the UPND cadres. And uh, at the time, there was a candidate there who was even cited you know, in that activity. How come? they haven't been arrested. You understand what I'm saying? Why this double standard? People have died just in the recent 
you know, ended the campaigns and elections of 2021. What has happened? Not only Congo, there are people who died in Western province, people who died in Southern province. Why are, is it that all those cases are not prominent? They are not discussed. The president himself has not even expressed disgust about such barbaric acts. Have you ever heard Mr. Kande Chirema condemn what happened about the you know, provincial chairman for, Eastern, for Northwestern province of the Congo? Nothing. The only thing the president has said you know, near to talking about the barbaric acts of UPND is saying, you know, our members know those who mistreated them. They even know their home addresses. And therefore, it's only natural that they would react and want to, you know, revenge. But uh, as it were, we are trying to manage the situation. A head of state. Is, is your conscience clear as PF that morally you are standing on firm ground and no one should point anything into your camp? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Because the patriotic France uh, misconduct, the judgment was meted out on the 12th of August. We were kicked out of government. That judgment from the Zambian people who are the final who have the final say in 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 terms of political parties and those that are in government, they meted out their judgment. In this case, those who are in government today have the responsibility to make sure that justice prevails. You understand what I'm saying? And justice is only guaranteed when the process to which that is to be achieved is professionally you know, uh, professionalism is guaranteed. What is going on? There's no professionalism. Okay, let me give you examples. You referred to Honorable Kampiongo. Honorable Kampiongo, it is said that the acts happened in Shwangando. What was wrong with Honorable Kampiongo being sent a call out or code to say you have to appear in Shwangando on Friday? This is an honorable member of parliament. He's not a fright risk. You saved as home affairs minister. You arrest him here. You don't even charge him. It is on one and caution. You bundle him like a criminal in an open van with I don't know how many vehicles, escort, dramatizing this arrangement. This is not about the merit of the case. This is about propaganda to suggest that a former Home Affairs Minister misconducted himself to a point where helicopters were not allowed to land and so on and this whole drama. It is feeding into a narrative that the President has been carrying so that he can look good. Look at Honorable Malange. Honorable Malange is the, being... The only man who can buy an, a, 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 a helicopter. Yes, and that should be celebrated among Zambians. Zambians must never tolerate that the, the narrative that the white man has always tried to indoctrinate in us that it is actually wrong for a black man to be rich. That we have embraced as a people. If I see you progressing, you have started a, a, a TV station. In my mind, I begin to think you don't qualify to start a TV station. You don't qualify to earn you know, money more than the basic that we know about. That poverty mentality is what is eating us up. Malanja has been a business person even before, you know, getting into, <laughs> uh, becoming a member of parliament, before getting into the ministerial position. We know his, it's like Mr. Kainde Hichilema himself. He, he <laughs> claims to be a businessman. Of course, we have issues. We were hoping that Mr. Kainde Chilema, since he has been on the lips of all of us over the issues of privatization, I thought that now he has an opportunity as president to say, okay, these other president failed to deal with the issue of privatization. And since I have been a subject on this matter, actually the investigations on issues of crime should start from the 90s so that we can also take an audit and investigate what happened around issues of privatization. Because even me, for us as a people to heal and as a people to be able to look to the future with, a dif with different lenses, let all of us be subjected to this investigation. Open, PF, UPND, every leader. 
But the double standard is very clear. It's only you PF officials and PF former ministers and so on that are being probed. 